Hi, I'm a researcher here at the Biodiversity Center next door, and I'm going to be telling you about termites. And this is a termite here, right here. And this is actually a local species. If you didn't know, we have termites locally here in British Columbia. There are two species. One's called Zootermopsis, and the other is called Reticulotermes. Um, you don't have to worry about the names too much because I don't really care about the termites so much. What I care about is the microbes that live inside of their digestive systems. And um, so who can tell me what termites like to eat? What? <laughs> you have to put up your hand, right? Okay. <laughs> they eat wood. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and does anyone, do you like eating wood? Have you ever tried eating wood? You have tried. And how does it taste? Yeah, not so good. But for some reason, termites really like it. And I'm going to tell you, they like it because they have all these microbes in their gut that break down the wood for them and then extract out the really yummy things that the termite can really use for food. Okay. So what is a termite, really? This is a termite here. And like I said, it lives, this is a local termite. It lives inside um, decaying logs. And it's actually the organism that does a lot of the... Um, decomposition of um, forest, of logs especially, in forests. So they're really important to the ecosystem in, in, in terms of converting, um, you know, woody biomass into um, sort of more um, mushier biomass, I guess I'll use those words. Um, termites are also highly social. So they live in colonies. So inside of a log, there's going to be like hundreds or thousands of individuals living together. So this, these are the um, nymphs here okay, that do a lot of the wood eating. And this one here is a soldier. And you can see it's a soldier because it's got these big mandibles up front and it defends the nest. Okay. Termites are also really well known for making these enormous structures. And these are sort of not found in British Columbia. I'm sure you haven't seen these around here. But they are common in Australia and in Africa. And they create these huge mounds that are actually um, their homes and their like, ventilation systems for their nests underneath. <laughs> they are really tall, yeah. Like if you saw a person standing next to one of these mounds, it would probably only be like that tall, this person. OK. So what makes a termite a termite? Well, in comparison to other insects, termites eat wood, and they are also social. So they live in colonies. And these two characteristics are actually highly dependent um, on their microbial community in their guts. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> Hold on a few minutes. OK, so they eat wood, and because and because they have these symbiotic microbes that break down the wood inside of their guts, that, was, that is what allows them to exploit this niche of eating wood that other insects can't do. The other interesting thing is um, because they're social, they're able to transfer their microbes from one individual to the next. And they do this through this process called um, trophallaxis. And that means that they actually eat each other's feces, okay? So <laughs> the microbes are, um, have co-evolved with the termites. So they have this unique community inside of their guts that is tailored to digesting wood. And in order to pass on this trait from one individual to the next, they can directly transfer their microbes through their feces. So... Um, all right, and so the next question is, what is a microbe? Does anyone, can anyone tell me what a microbe is? Just a broad definition. No, a microbe is not a kind of termite. I'll tell you what a microbe is. A microbe is a one-celled organism, okay? So we are multicellular, right? If we look at... Our hands, our hand is covered with skin. There's like veins inside and muscle. And these, those are like, this hand is probably millions of cells right here, okay? But I, as a whole, am multicellular. A microbe is a one-celled organism. So this 
All of these things are pictures of different kinds of microbes, and the individual is just one cell. So it can live on its own. It is not dependent on any of the other, any other cells. It's just one cell, one individual. And I've just put up here um, just an image of all the different kinds of microbes that you can that we know of. And there's like thousands and millions more. Um, the thing is, we don't know much about microbes as we should because they're too small to see with the naked eye. So we need a lot of specialized instruments in order to understand what microorganisms are doing. Uh, so microbes basically are everywhere. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go on a hunting trip, okay? And we're going to, t I'm going to take you to um, Pacific Spirit Park. Does everyone know where Pacific Spirit Park is? Yeah, it's just this, that forested park that's just outside of UBC. And we're going to look for our local termite called Zootermopsis angusticolis. Okay, we're going to call them Zoot for short. Okay, so we're going to go on this hunting trip. What do you think we might need in order to look for termites? Yes, no. Nope. The axe, good, yeah, we'll need the axe. Okay, we'll need the axe to chop down um, the logs so that we can get a look inside of the wood. Um, does anyone have any other ideas of what we might need? Uh, a shovel and a bucket. Actually, we might not need the shovel and the bucket. How about you? Net. A net. Well, um, these termites are inside the log, so we're not going to need any nets because they don't really fly until they are ready to mate. So we're not going to look for the mating stages. Okay, what else do you think we might need? How about you right there in the brown sweatshirt? <laughs> a bucket? Yeah, a bucket might be handy for holding big chunks of wood. That is true. But what we really need here is a, a light-covered container to hold our sample. Okay, because termites actually don't really like light, right? They like living deep inside of the log. So when we collect the sample, we want to put it into a container where light can't get in so that they stay nice, so that they're comfortable. Okay, so here's the forest, all right? Let's go tromping through the forest. Okay, we'll take our axe. Here's a nice fallen log. Actually, this is a pretty big one. I probably wouldn't go after one this big, but today we will. Take our axe, chop into it. Okay. Yeah, what are we going to see? All right, first of all, we might see um, a soldier. Okay. Soldiers usually parole around the outside of the nest, right? Like I said, these guys are going to patrol the nest and protect it from any enemies. Here are some of the termites that are inside of the log. And as you can see, as soon as you chop into the log, they start to run away from the light. Okay, so we'll take a few of those out of the log. Okay, put them into our sampling container. Here's a close-up of some of the ones that were inside the crevices. They run away from slugs. They might run away from slugs, yeah. They don't have teeth. They have things called mandibles that um, take up big chunks of the wood and then swallow it. And then, so their mandibles are up here, okay? So now, now that we've collected our termites, we're going to go on a microbe hunt, okay? So when we do a microbe hunt, we're going, to, uh, we're going to need some different tools. But first of all, I'm going to tell you why we need to go on a microbe hunt. So the termite's going to eat the wood, okay? It's going to go down their throats, just like we have throats, get into their stomachs. Um, over here is their crop, where they can grind up the wood into smaller pieces. <laughs> So they can grind up the wood here in their crop, and then in this midgut section, the termite itself has some enzymes to break down the wood. So it can get broken down a little bit here, but all the action happens here in the hindgut. Okay, so we're going to go on a trip into the hindgut, okay? Everyone ready? All right, so let's see. What kind of things will we need to go on our microbe hunt? A hatchet? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? A microscope. A microscope. Yeah, we'll need a microscope. Yeah. How about you? This is a microscope right here. What do you think we need? 
the needle thingy right over here. Yeah, these are called forceps. Yeah, they help us um, in our dissection of the termite gut. Anyone else? Yeah. What do you think we need? The needle? Well, I don't know. If you're pointing at this thing, we're going to need this thing. This thing is called a pipetter. It helps. Um, it's like a turkey baster, except for a, a microbial-sized turkey baster. You can move liquids around in small quantities, so that's good for our microbe hunts. Okay, so let's see. And the bucket. No, we don't need the bucket. So we need the forceps, the uh, pipetter, and then instead of a, a big sampling container, this is our little micro tube for micro-sized things. All right, and the microscope. Okay, good stuff. All right, so here we are. This is me. I'm dissecting my little term right here. Okay, and I've pulled out the hind gut. This is the hind gut right here. Okay. Yeah, because I put it under a microscope, so it's really uh, magnified. Okay. So, all right, now I'm going to switch and uh, show you some video footage here. Let's see. Okay, so here's the hind gut that is under the microscope. Okay? Um, so here are the microbes that are, you can see they're wiggling inside <laughs> of the gut. Um, this is, uh, these are malpighian tubules, that's part of their, um, their excretion system. Um, this is sort of the fluid that's inside of the hindgut. Okay, you can see all sorts of action going on here. There are some big cells here and some smaller cells here. There are some long ones. Okay, there you go. I have a question. Sure. How do they move? How do they move? Well, they have these long hairs on the outside of their cells that help them swim through the fluid. Okay. Do they swim in water? No, this is um, inside of their the termite stomachs. Okay. Are those bubbles? No, they're actually cells called protists. And here you can see they have these um, orange colored things is the uh, woody material that they've actually taken up, eaten. What is that yellow stuff? That's the woody stuff that they're going to eat, that they've eaten. Um, so this is, so now we're going to go and look at all these different kinds of microorganisms that are living inside of the termite hindgut. Okay. So I've diluted this sample down a little bit, so... Um, so we can see them a bit better. Okay. So these guys are uh, called trichonympha. They're the biggest ones in the hindgut. They're about a fifth of a millimeter big. So they're actually extremely large for a microorganism. This, okay. Here's another look at the entire hindgut. Oops. Okay. You can see these ones spinning around, okay, and here's another trick enough. Oh, yeah, they're dancing because they just like being really active, okay. So you can see them all swimming and jiggling there. They're probably searching for wood to eat. Um, okay, this is real time, yep. So here, oops. You can see their, their nucleus here. Why are they all furry? Why are they all furry? Well, that is a really good question, actually, because when you see them inside of the hindgut, they're like tightly, tightly packed, one on top of the other, right? So maybe their flagella aren't really for swimming in, in fluid, but maybe it's just so that they can clamber on top of, each, on top of one another and get around that way. Um, we're not really sure. We don't really know much about the organisms in the hindgut of the termite. Um, all we know is that a, a lot of what we know is that they're just really diverse and they're part of this really um, ancestral lineage of organisms. And part of my work is, is studying what they do and why they have all these features and how they go about digesting wood. Okay.
So <laughs> this is the nucleus here. That's where the, all the uh, genetic material is contained. And here are all sorts of woody bits that, the, um, that this organism has taken up called trichonympha. Um, can anyone tell me which side is, um, is their mouth? Here, right here. This side is actually, that's the direction they swim, okay? But they actually take in their wood through their back end. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's watch this guy a little longer. Whoops. Okay. This is another species of trichinempha. You can see he's a lot rounder. Okay, so now we're going to look at this organism called Trichomytopsis. He also lives in the hindguts, and he's got this really cool membrane on the outside that's, that's got a flagella attached to it. So this guy also eats little chunks of wood that you can see inside of it, and they're not always round. Sometimes they have a sort of elongated shape as well, like this. <laughs> And this guy is called Streblomastix. So this guy is really cool. Um, a long guy, and he's got these twisted things around the outside. And these long, twisty things aren't actually part of the Streblomastix cell itself. They are um, symbiotic bacteria that live with this protist. Okay, and a lot of these big, um, bigger cells that are inside of the gut also have bacteria symbionts associated with them. So it's like a symbiosis inside of a symbiosis. Okay. And yes, it is inside the termite. Okay. And here it is yeah. dancing around. This is also streblomastix. Okay. And here's another image of a streblomastix. <laughs> um, because they, um, they are doing something really important inside the termite gut to help them break down the wood. Okay, so here are some of the smaller ones up here that you can see them. They're kind of, uh, they dance, they have a really long flagella. These are much smaller than those bigger guys. Why, why do they have a long, long? And they seem to like to eat sort of highly broken down material. They may even go after some of the dead cells in the termite gut. And then here is an image of a, a bunch of the free living, well, I can say free living, but free floating bacteria in the termite gut. Okay, so there's some curly ones here. And all these little dots here are also bacteria. So there are tons and tons of different kinds of bacteria that live in the termite gut as well. Why do they swim? I don't know. They're looking for food inside of the gut. Do they all break down the woody matter? No, they all do not break down the woody matter. Um, that's sort of a big topic of research, is to understand exactly what all the interactions that are going on inside of the gut. And uh, yeah, I'll show you some information about that in a sec. So, OK. Lots and lots of bacteria, and they're also very active as well. They, like, they swim around. This one here is a spirochete, because it spirals around as it swims, or as it moves. OK. Well, it's got these uh, proteins that go slide across each other, so they go bloop, 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 like that. Okay, so here are some of the organisms, microorganisms that we've met inside of the termite gut. Um, so we have trichonympha. <laughs> yes, what's your question? Trichomytopsis, tricercomitis, and streblomastix, and then spirochetes, and lots and lots of other bacteria. And these all live as a community inside of the termite hindgut. <laughs> Okay, and like I mentioned, these protist symbionts 
also have symbionts. So this is a trichonympha cell, and this is the same cell over here. And what we've done is, why well, I haven't done this work, it's somebody else's work, but you can um, get a, a fluorescent colored probe to bind to the bacteria. And when you look at it under a certain light, you can see all these um, orange bits are the bacteria that are living inside of this um, trichonympha cell. And like I mentioned, this is uh, the Strevelmastix. And all of these striations here are long, long bacteria that are attached um, to the Strevelmastix. OK, so the big question then is so we have all these microorganisms in the hindgut. Like, what are they doing there? What is their job for the termite? OK. So these bigger cells here, OK, these guys like to eat chunks of wood. And like I said, those chunks of wood, for this case, they go in that way. And then this one, we're not really sure how they take up the big chunks of wood. But we can see them inside of their cells, so they must eat them somehow. They uh, take the chunks of wood and they break them down into sugars that, that they can use for energy. Okay. Um, they can also break down the wood into this other compound called acetate. Okay? And it, the termites, they really, really love acetate. Acetate is this molecule that is sort of the basis for any kind of um, bio, biochemical that you would need in the body, like amino acids or other sugars or <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> OK. They also produce um, hydrogen and carbon dioxide as waste products. OK. So the other, what do the other organisms do? OK. So here are some of the um, symbiotic bacteria that are on the bigger cells. These guys will take in sugar, because you know who doesn't like sugar, right? And can also spit out acetate. Yeah, more acetate. Yum, yum. <laughs> OK. And then as a waste product, hydrogen is also produced. OK, so the little tiny bacteria, like these spirochetes, for instance, we know something about them. They will take in the waste products that these bigger cells are producing, like hydrogen and carbon dioxide. And they can convert that into acetate. Yay, more acetate for the termite. Um, they can also do something that's even probably more important, since there's other organisms that can make acetate, these bacteria can also take in nitrogen gas and convert that into amino acids. Okay? And amino acids is really important because they're like, um, they're like vitamins for the termite. Okay? You can't just eat sugar, right? How many times have your parents told you that? Not just candy, right? You need your vegetables, too. So amino acids are kind of like vegetables for termites. So amino acids help me grow. All right. So, so this whole relationship between the microbes in the gut and with the termite is called symbiosis. Right? So here's the deal. The termite says, I'll give you wood if you give me acetate. Hey, and then what do the microbes say? The microbes say, sure, zoot, and thanks for the free rent. Right? So the termite actually makes like a kind of sheltered home for these microorganisms so they don't have to face all of the harsh environmental like the, um, conditions in the natural environment, like rain or the cold or um, other um, problems that you might face. Okay? The other interesting thing is these microbes also might protect the termite from any diseases that might enter in through the gut. Okay, because the gut is so heavily colonized with these microbes, other um, parasitic micro microorganisms or microorganisms that might cause disease to the termite can't get a foothold because these microbes are in such high density. Okay. So I didn't show you um, what these other guys do because we actually really don't know. We can't really grow any of these microorganisms outside of the termite. So it's really difficult to study what function they have inside of the termite. And 
then in terms of studying the whole community of microorganisms and their interactions with, with each other, um, there's still a lot to, be, to know about, you know, does this mi microorganism share things with this one? Does this one share things with that one? And how the whole ecosystem inside of the gut works and how this benefits the termite itself and even on a bigger scale, how this affects forest ecosystems in terms of how quickly they can degrade um, wood material and how all of that wood material may flow into other um, types of animals and microbes and the whole carbon cycle. Okay, so termites are gracious hosts for a diverse community of amazing microbes. Now, like I said at the beginning, like microbes are everywhere. So can you think of other places where you might find microbial communities? Anyone want to ask or anyone have any suggestions? <laughs> soil, yeah, sure. Lots of microorganisms in soil. They also do a lot of breakdown of organic matter. There's also a lot of organisms that are associated with plants. Yeah, oh, you were gonna say plants, that's a good one, yep. Especially in their roots, microorganisms are um, required for the um, plants to gain nutrients. Like when I said nitrogen converts, microorganisms can convert nitrogen to amino acids. Yeah, that's really handy for plants too. Hey, anything else? Yep, we back there. You can find them in your mouth, yeah. So we are also really gracious hosts to microorganisms. And in fact, if you count all the cells that are in our bodies right now, there are 10 times more microorganisms in our bodies than there are human cells, okay? So, we of course also have microbes in our guts to help us with our digestion, right? And you know, that's one of the main reasons why eating yogurts and um, sometimes if people have digestive issues, they like to eat probiotics because these are, they provide microorganisms that can maybe digest things that we eat better than we can ourselves. We also have microbes, like was mentioned in our mouths and on our skin and any other place that you might think of on our bodies. Microbes are everywhere. So to end, um, I just want to tell you that, you know, we can find microbes everywhere. There's a whole slew of diversity out there that we don't know of. And they're also really fascinating and really pretty and gorgeous to look at. So get out there and go microbe hunting. All right. Thank you very much.